The Norse cosmology has been told to us in very subtle ways, and many of us don't even know it. We've heard about Asgard, Loki, Thor, Valhalla, Midgard, Jotunheim, and Nidavellir without knowing the true story behind these places and gods. We have Marvel and the Thor series to thank for that though. The Norse cosmology is an attempt by the North Germanic people to explain nearly all vital concepts of North mythology, such as anthropogeny, cosmology, time and space, estetology, and personification, far more than what is being portrayed in movies. As we discuss the nine worlds in this video, you'll find some common truths between both and pick up a couple of new things as well. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's get into it. According to North mythology, the nine worlds are the original homes of all kings or beings, such as the giants, dwarves, gods, and vikings who existed in ancient times. All nine worlds are held together in the roots and branches of the world tree Yggdrasil, a huge cosmic tree that sprung up in the ancient void of Ganungagap, void in which the world was created. The Yggdrasil's root extended to the spring of Helgelvmer and the well of Mimisbrun and Yudarbrun. While its main branches reach far into the sky, the tree is said to have been watered at its growth by female entities meant to spin the threads of fate. It has actively unified all nine worlds, Midgard, Asgard, Nidvralir, Venaheim, Alfamir, Musfilahim, Hel, and Niflahim. Now let's take a look at the world starting with Midgard. Number 1. Midgard, the world of humans. Midgard is a North mythology equivalent of Earth. It's located in the middle of the worlds, right beneath Asgard. Around it is an impassable ocean, occupied by the huge Midgard serpent called Jormungandr, that circles the realm entirely. You could say the serpent is insurance put in place to ensure the only way between Asgard and Midgard is the rainbow bridge known as the Bifrost. It also happens to be the only way the gods of Asgard used to journey to the human world. According to mythology, the first humans were created when Odin, Ve, and Veli walked along the sea and saw two trees. They created man from the ash tree, and the woman was made from the elm tree. The first man was named Ask, and the woman Imbla, and these two humans became the ancestors of all humans. The world is safe from attacks from the other worlds, especially giants. However, several folklore tales tell of a battle that will lead to destruction of Midgard, Ragnarok, where the large serpent would rise from the ocean and poison the land and sea with its venom, destroying all of Midgard along with all life on it. But at the end of the war, a new creation cycle would begin. Number 2. Asgard, the world of the Esser gods. Right above Midgard is Asgard, found high up in the sky. It's regarded as the heavens and is the home of the Asir goddess and gods. The chief of the Asir, Odin, has sole authority of Asgard and his wife, Frigg, assisting and ruling over the realm. Other Asir gods who live in Asgard are Thor, god of thunder, Loki, god of mischief, Baldr, god of light and glamour, among others. Asgard has been described as a celestial city with extremely high towers surrounded by a massive and complete wall. But why would such a mighty city have an incomplete wall? You see, the wall was incomplete because Thor struck it down when the Asir gods discovered that he was from a particular giant tribe made from ice in disguise. And you know how Thor gets when he gets angry. Of course, there are stories of Asgard's Ragnarok as well, where Sutur, ruler of the fire demons in Mespelheim, bring a flaming sword to destroy Asgard by turning and then turning into a flaming inferno. I'm pretty sure most of us are familiar with this one. There is a place called Hilskaljof in Asgard, where Odin would go to graze over the entire world when the need arises. Also inside Asgard, there is Valhalla, the Hall of the Slain, where half of those who died in battle would go, while the other half would go to Freya in Folkvang, kind of like living eternity in two folds at the same time. Cool. Number 3. Jotunheim, the World of the Giants Jotunheim is located near Asgard and Midgard. It's the home of the giants, also called Jotnar. They are sworn enemies of the Asir gods. The world is mostly of rocks, wilderness, and dense forests, and it lies in the snowy parts of the outermost shores of the impassable ocean. Consequently, the giants live mostly off the fish from the rivers and the animals that thrive in the forest. The world is one big expanse of barren landmass. Although the giants and the Asir gods are sworn enemies and fight constantly, they've also had some remarkable love affairs between them, 
most notably being between Odin and Thor and some female giants. Loki also came from Jotunheim, but he was accepted by the Aesir and resided in Asgard until he was punished. Number 4. Vanaheim, the world of the Vanir Gods As the name hints on, Vanaheim is the home of the Vanir Gods, god of health and fertility. Vanirs are an old branch of gods and masters of sorcery and magic. They are also praised for their talent to predict the future. The location of their land has been a mystery, and no one knows what it even looks like. However, some sources describe it as a fertile land with an abundance of magic and light. Some of the gods who lived there were Freya, goddess of love, lust, and fertility. Freya, god of fertility, peace, and victory. And Yor, god of fertility, peace, and victory. I guess they all shared the responsibility of managing fertility. At the end of the war between Asir and Vanir, the three Vanir, Nord, Friar, and Freya, relocated to Asgard as a token of peace. Number 5. Alfheim, home of the Light Elves Right next to Asgard in the heavens is Alfheim, home of the beautiful Light Elves. The Light Elves are considered the guardian angels. Remember Freya, the god of fertility among other things? Yeah, that guy. He also doubles as the ruler of Alfheim. The Light Elves are minor gods of fertility and nature, and they can either choose to help or hinder humans with their knowledge of magical powers. They've also been acknowledged for inspiring poets in music and art. You can say that they are the cool gods. They are believed to be fair, even fairer than the sun, and no one could bear to gaze at them. Number 6. Svalterheim, Home of the Dwarves Svalterheim, which means dark fields, is home of the dwarves and dark elves, who predominantly live under rocks in caves and underground. According to Nordic creation myths, the dwarves were originally maggots that preyed on the primeval giants, Ymir flesh. However, the gods then decided that they should acquire human understanding and created them from Ymir flesh to look like humans. The dwarves are considered master smiths and magicians whose creations have played a vital role in Norse culture. They created the mead of poetry, Molnir, Thor's hammer, and Gunnar, Odin's spear. Furthermore, some dwarves lived in Midgard, those who were descendants of Durin, the second dwarf ever created. Number 7. Niflheim, the world of fog and mist. According to Norse mythology, the home of mist, or mist world as it is otherwise called, is the darkest and coldest region of all the realms. Niflheim is one of the first two realms to be created and is placed in the northern part of the Ginnagap. The world's eldest spring, called Hvlerglamir, is located there and is protected by the huge dragon called Nidhug that gnaws at Yggdrasil. This bubbling, boiling spring is said to be the source of the eleven rivers. The spring is also believed to be the origin of all that is living and the place every living being would return. Number 8. Muspelheim, the Land of Fire just like Niflheim, Muspelheim is one of the world's first to be created from the primordial void of Gunga Gap. But consider this world the complete opposite of Niflheim. It's located in the southern region of the void, a burning hot place filled with lava, sparks, flames, and soot. Muspelheim also plays host to fire giants, fire demons, and is ruled by the giant Sutur, who is the adversary of the Asir, as earlier mentioned. In addition, the drops of fire from this world form Ymir, who played a key role in the creation of dwarves and was called the Erglemire by the Frost Giants. Number 9. Helheim, Realm of the Dishonorable Dead And finally, we've got Helheim, a place where all these who are deemed not brave enough, thieves, murderers, and the dishonorable dead go to. It's their version of Valhalla, only without pleasure. Hel, the daughter of Loki, rules over this realm. Helheim is a very grim and cold place, and those unfortunate enough to end up there will never feel joy or happiness again. The folklores have it that Hel will use all the dead in this realm as Ragnarok to attack the Asir gods and goddesses at the plain of Vigrid. Okay, now that you've learned about all the nine worlds of Norse mythology, what do you make of it? Do you believe there's any truth in the story, or is it just a pack of BS? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you around.